This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, I threw some axes. You threw some axes. I want to say that's a euphemism, but I don't think it is. And also, I'm hanging out with Josh Cafferty this week. I don't think that's a euphemism either. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Mystery Podcast, episode 281 for Sunday, the 28th of March, 2021. I almost nailed it. I, I like doubted myself for a second there. You were this close. Yeah, that's what she said. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and sitting next to him is Josh Cafferty. Uh, somehow related to the podcast, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know to what level I should disclose, but yeah. Uh, welcome uh, family and friend, Josh Cafferty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming on the show with us. Uh, Josh is traveling across the country, and uh, we were on the way. Basically, um, we'll talk about we'll, we'll talk a little bit later about why he's traveling. Um, but the reason he stopped at my house is that he is family. Um, this is Sassy and his brother, Josh. So, so. it amazes me, Kent. Mm -hmm. You live on the outskirts of a city. Barely mm. qualifies as a city. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, let, we're using that uh, term loosely at this point. Yeah, uh, you, you, you live on the outskirts of an established place to live. <laughs> okay. Sure. For, for multiple multiple people. Um, it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, there's nothing yep. near you unless you're really into sand dunes or stuck in the Air Force. Like, that's, you know... Yep. There aren't very many tourist destinations there unless you want to look, look at old Atari games or... You just have a bucket list of fucking astrology things that you need to take care of. Astrology? Yeah. Uh, well, well uh, astronomy? There's actually, astronomy. There's more around here than, than what people give this area credit for. And uh, that's actually going to be, uh, we're going to discuss some of that in our main topic. Well, today. we fucking better because I can't think of any other reason why so many people just happen to be going through your fucking neighborhood. Like, right, right. Like <laughs> three out of the four times I visited, it's, it was literally because you were on the way somewhere else. Yes, yes. It is it is a well known pass through. <laughs> like it was like oh we keep... you're traveling across the United States, at some point you're gonna have to travel through nothing. Like middle of nowhere. Yeah. And Alamogordo is just like boom, right in the middle of nowhere. Here you go. Here's a yeah. place to stop. It's one of those choices is like, well, we can either go through El Paso and save fifteen minutes but have to drive through El Paso or <laughs> We can stop by and see Kent, and again, it'll only yeah. take us an extra 15 minutes, plus whatever time we spend there. Uh, I'm going to guess his toilets are cleaner. We should stop by there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of crazy. A little fucking Alamogordo is, is like this this central hub of bullshit. Yeah. Um, of things to do in this area, though. I did something that I'd never done before. Uh, I threw some axes yesterday. Now, I'd never known this was like a big thing to do until David did it last year with his with his with his uh, uh, birth dad, birth father, uh, out in Connecticut. Like I couldn't think of like because usually I just to say he's my son. I'll not trying not to confuse people. He's my stepson. Um, he did it over the summer with his dad out in Connecticut, and then a couple weeks ago, our family noticed that an axe throwing place opened up here in Wasilla. So. Yeah. Let me like tell me what was your axe throwing experience? Now yeah, this this so, is not a euphemism. You actually threw axes, right? I actually threw axes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, and it it is becoming a thing. Like over the last couple of years, this is like a thing that like uh, weirdly enough, bars <laughs> are uh, are getting on board with this thing. Now uh, there was a place in Korea where you could throw your glass. Like if they gave you a glass of beer, yep, it was a yep. frozen, it was water frozen in the shape of a glass. Then they put the beer in there, so you didn't have to worry about the beer warming up or anything else. It was good because it was height, and height does not taste good when it warms up. Um, and then at the end, you take your 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 glass of made of ice and you throw it at a target. And if you hit the target, you get a free beer. Uh -huh. um, so that was the first time yeah. I'd, I'd thrown anything. Well, I'm still the only time I've ever thrown anything was there. So. Not, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had a uh, an office gathering, uh, which was very strange because I haven't really been around people in a year. I mean, other than like you know socially distanced office interaction, uh, this is the first time I've been unmasked around a group of people 
in in so long. Uh, most of my office is vaccinated now, mm-hmm. um, and my my boss is moving on to a new job. So we we did a kind of like a going away uh, type thing where we you know did the typical military thing where you present them with a plaque and all of that kind of stuff, thank right. them for their contributions and all of that. Um, but yeah, we were out in public, like in a public place without masks on. And it was the strangest sensa- sensation. Like I, I was just like weirded out, especially I'll get to, I'll get back to the ax throwing thing here in a second, but we went to a restaurant afterward and ate indoors without masks on. And I was just like uncomfortable <laughs> for most of that. Like the, the wait staff would come around, they'd be masked. And whenever they would come around, like, yo, sir, would you like uh, some more water? You know, I, I would, like, take my napkin and, like, cover my mouth while I was talking to her. It was like, I don't even know what to do in this situation. That's, yeah, that's crazy. I don't even. Yeah. So axe throwing was actually really cool. It, it took a while to get the hang of, of like, the, you know, proper technique and things like that. Um, but I realized that it's a lot like throwing a dart. Like, the... Like how, you know, you keep your arms straight, you go like basically from the ear forward and you, you carry your momentum after the release and all mm. that kind of stuff. The technique is very similar. It's like throwing a heavy dart, basically. Mm. Um, and it didn't take me too long to get to get used to the motion. Um, but yeah, we, we like uh, formed team, like two person teams and we would play a, a game. We had a board, like a wooden board in the back that yeah. was, it was like a, you know, it was like a, a target, right? So you had different... Um, denominations on the board you would aim for those we we played a version of 21 so you had to score up to 21 if you went over you were set back by you know this whole thing um but my my teammate brian and i were undefeated so i'm 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 proud to be an axe throwing champion i'm basically an assassin now is what I'm yeah say. yeah you're, you're, full, you're fully <laughs> trained you're ready to go I'm ready, man. Let's go. Let's yeah. Go. A lot of assassins use axe throwing as their main. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that is a, uh, it's a, it's a ninja skill. That, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm proud to have checked that box. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a backwoods ninja skill. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's the, yes, it's, it's the, it's the redneck ninja, uh, uh, skill set. Now, now ha- have you, uh, have you started browsing online for, uh, for granite flywheels to sharpen your own axe collection? Ah. Is... Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Well, I need to. I need to start building my collection. Is, yeah. is kind of what I um, or you know, starting one. Well, yeah. I mean, there's that. I mean, I guess I got to. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't. He doesn't know about my arsenal that I have hidden in the house. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Josh. If you look around the house really carefully, you'll see an axe in every room, carefully disguised as something else, like that Sam Adams sign behind you. That's actually. <laughs> Yeah, the same Adams beat sign behind you. It's actually offset from the wall, just enough to reach up and grab a, an axe from behind it. So, oh yeah. shit! Now, now you're gonna have to move that, can't? Because now people are gonna know. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, okay. I was meaning to redecorate anyway, so yeah. it's fine. Okay, it's fine. okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Just don't tell them about the the axes hidden in the bricks in the wall behind you too. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Access, not... Accessible from both sides, by the way. Like it's it's <laughs> genius. Uh, <laughs> If you, if you find it, if you find an awkward one, just push the brick three bricks above it, and it'll pop out, and you'll have an axe in hand. It's Oh shit! Yeah. Now I'm telling you, I'm telling you yeah. more stories. Like fuck. It's not a good secret holder. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why they never I gave me the good jobs. Any of my deep dark secrets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't don't tell me shit. That, that that just goes in life. Like don't. I I fully I fully understand that that if a secret is only a secret as long as you're the only person that knows it. Because as well, soon as at some point it just becomes information. Yeah, it, it, like a secret. Uh, three friends can hold the secret if two of them are dead. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things to go with that. One of them was, uh, I think, t- was it Tyrion? It was either Tyrion or or Varys that had a good quote from. Uh, from uh, about uh, I think it's if three people know it, it's now information or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it is. Um, yeah. I could have used your ninja skills. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Monday, Monday and Tuesday, I had like this. I don't. I wouldn't call it heartburn, but I had like this pain in my uh, right around my diaphragm um, mm-hmm. that I couldn't get to go away, and it would, it would come and go. Like every couple minutes, it would hit again, and it it was like was stifling. it a heart attack? No. Yeah, heart attack? No. That, How'd that your left arm. 
That, it, it, it felt fine. A little sore because I'd beat off the night before, but, you know, nothing oh, wow. no, nothing abnormal. Um, <laughs> Man, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely not doing it right. <laughs> it's a, a sore process. <laughs> Uh, look, man, it, things change when you're older. Uh, so <laughs> you got to use the left arm for is, other things and the right arm for yeah, other yeah. Things. Do you know how hard it is to to hold up a a, a tire while you're anyway? Um, <laughs> no king shaming here. Uh, right. So I was I was downstairs. Um, so here's here's my normal morning routine. I climb out of bed. I go to the bathroom and usually brush my teeth right off right off the bat. Uh, pee, brush my teeth, put my sweatpants on because that's what I wear around the house. And my sweatpants, yeah. I leave them in the bathroom because that's where I take them off at night. When I, you know, so if I'm going to, you know, wear sweatpants like over a couple of days because they're house pants, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll I'll leave them right there by the uh, by the sink. Well, this time I went and I got them. I put them on. I went downstairs, let the dog out because that's the first thing I need, I need to do in the morning is let the dog out. And I went in to take my morning shit. Which means I did not pee beforehand because I knew I had to take a shit, so there's no point in, you know, like. Okay, yeah. Want to be efficient. efficient. Yeah, efficiency. Well, it wasn't even efficiency. Like, the bladder is like a great pressure point. Like, you know, I, I always uh, poop and then pee. Like, I know a lot of people are like, they sit down, they pee, then they poop. Like, you're giving away half your pressure, but whatever. <laughs> like. All right. It's another one of those age things. I got, I got you. I, I mean, this this might be more hemorrhoid related, but whatever. Um, so, <laughs> cause and effect. It, it, there's there's no telling which. Um, so I go down there and I'm taking a shit, and dogs outside, and I knew he had to shit because he didn't he hadn't shit like the afternoon evening before, so I knew he was gonna be a little bit. So I went ahead and you know sitting down. And I was popping some TikToks while I'm grunting away because again I get this pain in my belly. Like I'm hoping he's got that that I want to throw up and I want to poop and like all the things at once you know it's like this just it just doesn't feel right uh steam toggle says this has the both the ritual and the misery and he's very true that's right yeah. um so i'm sitting there and i and and the the process is completed as far as the process is going to be completed in this setting or in this in this session so i go to put my phone down i'm still watching a tiktok I'm, i you know i just started or whatever so i put it on the ground so i can watch it and i noticed something out of my out of the out of the corner of my left eye, and I look down and there's a fucking spider on my leg. Oh, are we talking about like a, like a little spider, like like just real like a tiny little guy? Okay, two things. One, when you find a spider within the, within a six inch area of your nuts, it doesn't fucking matter how big it is. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Two. No, it was not a tiny fucking spider. <laughs> okay. Are, are we talking like like an Australian spider, the ones that like uh, kill birds and eat them? No, I'm I'm trying to find something. So here I have a USB dongle for uh, for uh, my keyboards. You know, it's got the oh, USB sure. part and then like a tiny little antenna on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's about how big the body was. Oh, okay. So All the right. legs the legs were coming out, maybe about a finger length. On my fucking leg. Where'd it come from? Uh -huh. I don't fucking know. But I like karate chopped that shit off my leg. And I didn't see where it went. I just know it went towards my sweatpants, which were, you know, down uh, oh, at my at my knees. No. Burn the sweatpants. I have never gotten undressed that fucking quickly in my life. Like legs flailing, I'm trying to pull just because you know the the my 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 boxers and my sweatpants are like intermingled, you know. So I just I'm just fucking yanking them off, and then I'm staring at them with like uh, uh, cyclops eyes, like just fucking staring at them while I'm wiping. And I finish wiping, flush the toilet. Don't my eyes never leave this the the pile of clothing that is now in the floor that is in not break eye contact. Yeah, that is that is possibly infected with the. Fucking hell spider. Yeah. And I go and I reach over and I basically pick it up by the the, the, the thread that's, uh you know, where, where the elastic band matches on the backside of the underwear and it like it leaves a little tail there. I pick it up by that. Sure. And, and so I'm picking up by this one little piece and the sweatpants are hanging from, from the drawers. And I go upstairs, and of course, I'm downstairs in the basement. We have cameras in the living room, which is also in the basement. We have cameras. Uh, a, a camera in the dining room, which is where the basement comes out, you know, mm -hmm. like where the hell? So luckily I was wearing an oversized t-shirt. 
So I'd basically just wrap the front end around my nuts, grab the back end, and like pinch it off in the middle with my fucking. So I'm, I'm wearing a t-shirt speedo. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wearing a t-shirt speedo as I'm holding the fucking pants like this, and I carry it into the laundry room, drop it down, head upstairs, and of course I don't know how well I wiped my ass at that time because that wasn't the point. That wasn't the focus of my mind. So I went ahead and grabbed a shower. Plus I didn't know like. Creepy. Uh, yeah, it could have so, been on you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it it was. It could still be there, but it definitely was on me. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I fucking laid babies in the backside of my knee or what. I don't know what the fuck it was doing. You know. So I grab a shower and I uh, uh, go down, and of course I forget that pile of laundry in the laundry room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife comes down a couple hours later. She's gonna throw a load of laundry in. She sees. My sweatpants and my drawers on the pi in a pile in the laundry room, uh -huh. where you can't get to the laundry room without being on camera in this house. So she's like, "What the oh, fuck?" Yeah, yeah the sur surveillance state uh, that your house is. Yes. Yeah. Um, look, if you have a six-year-old that tries to burn down the fucking house with everything that she does, you would have the same. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was that was that was my Tuesday. So as I'm as I'm down here uh, uh, doing DTNS on Tuesday morning, I get a text from the wife going, "What the fuck happened last night? And why are your underwear and, and sweatpants in a pile on the floor in the laundry room?" Yeah. So so did you find the spider? Like no. Did you have a confirmed body? No. 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 Oh, no. <laughs> it's uh, it's somewhere in your house right yeah, now. I'm gonna be plotting. watching behind you now. Yeah, waiting for. <laughs> I know. So so I, I tell you all that. So if you see a black blob on my shoulders. While I'm doing this with holding a fucking axe, like let me know because that's what I'm assuming is happening right now. The spider's plotting against me. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Cogbill said, "Are you sure the spider was even real?" No, but it doesn't matter. Like I'm still scared shitless. Like this could have been a, a, a visual delusion. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Brought on by heartburn and needing. To, yeah. You know, yeah. It's like Fight Club, but with spiders. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Man, well, that sucks. Um, so I figured you'd appreciate that story because you, I, like, what would you have done? Like, what would you, like, would you just found some fucking aerosol and a lighter and just I, towards this shit right there in your leg? Like, <laughs> I, pro I, I probably just would have smashed it. Well, so you kind of like karate chopped the thing off your leg. That probably would have been my initial reaction. But then I wouldn't have worried about wiping my ass at that point. I would have just <laughs> went to, to, to crushing. Like, I would have been. But I couldn't, I couldn't find, I didn't know where the hell it was. And it's, it's the, yeah. it's the basement bathroom. And unless it's like, unless we have company coming over, my sister-in-law basically just runs that bathroom. So you don't know, you don't know what's where, like it, I could have like tried stomping the clothes and ended up like impaling my foot. Pet spiders probably. Uh, well, she's, she's all about just let the spiders be like, not the, yep. no, no, yep. no. When it, when it gets big enough to intimidate the dog, I'm fucking done with it. You know? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I could have like been stomping on, on it, trying to kill it within, within my sweatpants and ended up like impaling my foot on like, I don't know, a, a eyelash curler or some shit. Like I didn't know what the fuck <laughs> right. was down there on the ground. Like there's no telling in that bathroom. Mm. So that was my Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> um, shall we, shall we play a game? Um, is that a thing we do? I guess it's the thing we do. We should probably do that. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Games. I cannot contain myself. Ken's Games. Games. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! 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 All right. So today's game is called Forest Fires and Picnic Baskets. Oh. So. I sense. Well, I'm sure you guys can guess um, at least part of what that what it's about. Hey, uh, boo-boo. That's right. So, yeah. So I'm going to give you a fact about a bear, and you're going to tell me if I'm talking about Yogi Bear or Smokey Bear. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. So our main topic is national parks, and we're going to get into why. Um, we're going to talk about national parks. So coming up with a game, I was, like if I was going to do something about national parks, it would have had to be like, very specific. Like, in what year was Yellowstone National? Like, and I don't like to do those types of games. I like to give. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So first of all, Josh probably would have just sweeped or swept the uh, the game. Um, but also, like, it's 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 too it's just too hard. So, um, 
I wanted to do something that, that was more about the iconography of, of national parks and, and whatnot. So I, I settled on Yogi Bear and Smokey Bear. Um, so, Josh, you are the guest, so I give you the choice. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? Do we answer the same question or? No, you alternate. So okay. there's there's 10 total questions, so each contestant gets one or uh, five questions total. I'll go second. You'll go second. Okay. I'm going to let him receive. Right. All right. <laughs> Amos. So, you, again, you're going to tell me if this fact is about Yogi Bear or Smokey Bear. Gotcha. But not Boo Boo. Right. All right. He first appeared in 1958. 1958. I'm going to say that is probably close. They're probably within like five years of each other. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go with Yogi Bear. You're going to go with Yogi. Yep. And um, you would be correct. Woo! Um, for I think, the record, I think, uh, I think Smokey Bear. 1944 is when Smokey Bear. Oh, I would have put it later. Yeah, that's what I was thinking later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Josh. His home wait, 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 wait. So Smokey Bear came out in 1944. We've been fighting these fucking forest fires in California for damn near 100 years, and we still can't figure out not to fucking have explosive yeah. gender parties. <laughs> so the the U.S. Forest Service actually used Bambi as their as their um, mascot for a little while. Yeah. Until Disney revoked their. Um, yeah. Until they get tired of paying Disney fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So <laughs> Stephen Gumbel said, "Remember, kids, only you can prevent forests." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's too true. Okay, Josh. His home is in New Mexico. Hmm. Home is in New Mexico. There's not a lot of forests around here, but then I feel like the Yogi Bear cartoon also had a lot of forests. <laughs> I'm going to go with Smokey. You say Smokey, and yeah. you are correct. Wow. Maybe there used to be a lot of forest here. Yeah. They all burned yeah. down. Smokey and that's why Smokey Bear. I, I, <laughs> that's his origin story. Yeah, because yeah. Well, yeah, otherwise it would have to be like the Smoky Mountains, you know? Like that, that would have made sense, but no, yeah. that is clearly the case. All right, Man, deforestation really took hold because that place is a fucking desert now. Like it, that was quick. Right. One, one, one fire, and now we just got fucking hundreds of years of sand everywhere. Like it, that's. Now you know why he's dedicated his life to this. Yeah, I know. I, 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 that's legit. All right, Amos. He has a girlfriend named Cindy. Oh, that's got to be Yogi. You're going with Yogi? Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, you are correct. Uh, Smokey actually has a wife. Oh, I was going to say he's asexual. Okay. Yeah, Smokey, I, has, has, Smokey has a wife named Goldie. No, that, that, and that makes sense. You know, Smokey seems to be the more respectable, like, upstanding citizen. Yogi is kind of like the party bear, you know, always going out just trying to get <laughs> his picnic bear. baskets, you know? I don't know. Smokey seems like that Republican politician that gets caught with the male escort, you know. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. Yeah. No. But the fr the front like facing he, image he though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, Josh. On to you. All right. Your next fact. He has an adopted son. Yogi. You're going with Yogi. Going I'm, with Yogi. I'm assuming that you're you're thinking of Boo Boo. I'm thinking of something. I feel like Smokey just, he's too dedicated to the work. You know, he's very focused. You know, Yogi, you know. Mm. Now, now I, I will refute that a little bit because Smokey, being the upstanding front facing citizen that he is, he could have adopted something from the forest. And since he's already a bear, it would have qualified as his, you know, adoptive son. And it wouldn't have been weird if he had like a little rabbit following him around, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. So you know, now we now we know what a bear uses to wipe his ass when he shits in the wood. His stepson, his adopted uh, son. <laughs> so actually, it was Smokey. Smokey was was the the correct answer. Uh, so he and uh, Goldie actually tried to have cubs. Uh, they did what I bears a lot do. Of background. I thought he just had like a six word life. Like okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, they were un unsuccessful. So they. Um, uh, they found a an orphaned baby bear and named him Little Smokey and uh, adopted him as their own. All right. Now, 
you know the way my brain works. They found an orphaned little bear. Right, right. You know they right. stole that shit in Colorado. <laughs> you know, you know that's that's like the fucking Lindbergh bear or some shit, right? The Lindbergh bear. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. All right, Amos, your next fact. He was called Hotfoot Teddy for a while. Hotfoot Teddy. I'm going to go with Yogi. You're going Yogi? Yeah. Um, you would be incorrect. Oh. <laughs> um, so Smokey Bear is a real bear, uh, for the record. And um, when he was found, he w himself was an orphaned bear uh, due to a forest fire. And he was found by the rescuers at the top of a tree. He climbed the tree to escape the fire. And uh, he was, I think, three months old. I think he was a three-month-old cub at the time. And had climbed the tree. And pretty much he was rescued just in time because his his back end and his, his back paws were seared from the flames. Um, and, and when they, when they first found him, they called him hot foot Teddy, but he was very quickly renamed to Smokey. Hmm. Okay. All right, Josh. All right. Got to redeem myself. He is a brown bear. Is that Yogi or Smokey? He is a brown bear. Well, brown bears are actually really rare in the U S. So if Smokey was a real bear, I'm going to say Yogi was a brown bear. That is correct. That is correct. Smokey is an American black bear. Okay. Um, Amos, on to you. He often interacts with Ranger Smith. Oh, that's Yogi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't call it interacting. He interacts with, with Ranger Smith the way black people interact with the cops. <laughs> oh, my God. Like... Like Ranger Smith, Ranger Smith may be trying to help, but he's just causing fucking trouble for Yogi. Oh dear God! Speaking of which, uh, have have you watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Anybody? No. no. Am I by myself here? Oh my God! Get another beer on that one. <laughs> uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier goes places. Um, yeah. Some, somebody, somebody that's watched that, hit me up on Discord because I want to have some some conversations about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. All right, um, this one goes back to you, Josh. He lived in Washington, D.C. for several years. Is that Yogi or Smokey? I'm going to go... I'm going to go with... I'm Smokey. Smokey. Smokey? Yeah, right. it's got to be Smokey. You are, gonna be you are correct. The, the D.C. Zoo? He, uh, You're talking about the real bear living at the D.C. The Zoo? Real bear, yes. The yeah. real bear, actually, he lived in the National Zoo for 26 years. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, Amos. He was sued by a baseball player. Oh, Yogi Bear. Well, right. technically, Hanna Barbera was sued by Yogi Bear. Yeah, that's a. Yep, exactly. That is yes. That is a technicality, but that is the answer I was looking for. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the final question goes over to you, Josh. You have to get this wrong so we could, you know. So you could have the same score, because otherwise I'll just be sad. The U.S. Postal <laughs> Service. The US... uh, you can, you know, make your arm sore later. <laughs> <laughs> make yourself feel better? Yeah. The U.S. Postal Service gave him his own zip code. The US Post... I'm going to go with Smokey. Okay. Why, why, why do you choose Smokey on that one? Because since it's more political, I feel like... You know, it would be it would make more sense to give that to him, whereas the Yogi Bear, but like you'd have to do it for all the cartoons. So right, that'd be right. a lot of zip yep. codes. That know? really would. Yeah, no. There's that's... only so many numbers out there. <laughs> um, Smokey Bear was given his own zip code, which is two zero two five two for the record. He was given his own zip code in nineteen sixty four based on just the sheer volume of fan mail that he received at the National Zoo. The Postal Service gave him his own zip code so that it was contained. Yeah. Wow. So the so, final score 
four does to that four. still exist then or it might just got a post co- postal code out there I, that now gets I, no fan mail. well i guess it probably still gets yeah smoky bear is still um he's still rather prevalent he's not as like um you know in your face as he was in like the you know probably 60s 70s he's 80s. less preachy about it right yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, and he also ch- he changed his his slogan because it used to be only you can prevent forest fires, mm-hmm. but now it's only you can prevent wildfires, because there are so many fires now mm. that aren't necessarily forests, but it, you know like grasslands and and so forth. Makes sense too. So I yeah. um, I wonder how many Smokey the Bear spots in California were bought by PCG&E. Mm. The mm. California's electric company. Like, I yeah, wonder, yeah. like, like, oh, we have these smoky spots. We're like, nah, we'll put a fucking electric commercial there instead. Go ahead and here, just, here's some cash. Because yeah. them sons of bitches be lighting forest fires like nobody's business. Right. So your final score was four to four. You guys tied, um, which brings your collective total to 80%. It's respectable. So, uh, so uh, what, uh, what does that mean? Bob, tell them what they've done. You beat the D. Back to you, Daniel. So the conceit uh, there is that um, you want to get greater than 60% okay. so that you can beat the D. If you get 60%. Be- I'm sorry, we're going to beat the D? Right. No, yeah, no, we're not going to beat the D. Beat we D. did beat the D. We did. We beat the D together. Yes. yes, yes. Exactly. In okay. front of each other. We, we combined how's forces. How's your left arm feeling? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, how's your left arm? Because. <laughs> <laughs> You, 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 were, you were half of this. <laughs> little Dutch rudder action or something. That's, uh, that's some good teamwork, guys. Uh, good job beating that D. <laughs> oh, dear God. Okay, so National Things Park. you never think you're going to hear from family. All right. <laughs> that's right. Um, Maybe not pat Josh- people on the back right after you beat the D. Like, oh. Usually <laughs> it's a rubbing motion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my God! So many things. Um. So anyway, national parks. Uh, you are a uh, you are a fan of national parks. Not I, only I a, dabble. Not only a fan, but you are also um, you're a bit of a traveler. You enjoy going around the country and and visiting sites. Can you tell us a little bit about um, uh, why we're talking about national parks and like how that pertains to you? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm working on my PhD in sociology. So I'm basically working on research all the time and was very focused on that. And I started after, you know, a couple of years of the PhD program realizing that my life was miserable. You know, it's not a lot of fun to just sit and do research constantly and always be worried about deadlines and, you know, whether this is going to be good enough or whatever. So I've always been a little bit interested in the outdoors, done some mountain biking, Um you know, some things like that. But I always just went to places that were really close to me. Um, So one time I was like, you know, I want to just separate from school completely, you know, academia, put it behind. How can I do that? Well, I can go somewhere where I don't have phone signal because I can't get emails. I can't, I literally can't work on anything. So I did a trip over to Death Valley uh, in the winter because yeah, not (laughs) going there in the summer, but winter, it's fantastic weather. Um, And I did it and I loved it. I just had a lot of awe-inspiring moments. I really disconnected, you know, my work life and like my, you know, focusing on growing as a person, you know, had had a great time out there. Um, So then what I started doing is instead of ever flying anywhere, so my family all lives in Wisconsin, I live in Southern California. So instead of doing a flight out there, I would just start stopping at national parks along the way, doing a long road trip. Um, so I started doing that more. Um, and for instance, why, or part of the reason why I'm here right now is White Sands National Park is right next to Alamogordo where Kent lives. Um, so I, I just went out there with my sister and then I'm going to go to do a little round road trip to Carlsbad Caverns, Guadalupe Mountains and Big Bend National Park, all in New Mexico and Texas and do a little, uh, round trip. So it really just started as a way for me to get away from, you know, school now i want to do every national park and that's kind of my my little goal that i have set for myself yeah um what what is uh so 
how many national parks have you been to? Do you have you been keeping track like a checklist? Yes, yeah, I've been to 19 now with White Sands. White Sands was my 19th, and I've been doing it for since December 2019. And and how many are there? Just over. There's 63 now with the most recent stimulus bill. They added a new national park with that. Okay. So. And, yeah, and White Sands is actually pretty new. White Sands is a 60, 62nd. So it was the newest until the stimulus bill. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it's fairly new. Yeah. Uh, well, White Sands has been around for a long time, but it was considered a national monument until about a year ago, something like that. I yeah. Think. Is there is there more money in being a national park versus being yes. a national monument? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so it's kind of a status symbol, and national parks are done by Congress, so it's really hard to take away the status, whereas national monuments are done by the president, so the next president can be like, nah, I want to, you know, give this up for oil drilling or, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. So national parks, it's a lot harder to lose that status, so they're kind of the, you know, top. Now, ha have you changed your educational focus at all, or are you still doing sociology? Yeah, so actually I do environmental sociology now uh, because and, I really what? became, you know, kind of in tuned in that and realizing, wait, you know, kind of. Wait, wait, back know, up. Okay. I barely, <laughs> I barely understand sociology. What the fuck is it? What, what did you say? <laughs> so, so to give the kind of little breakdown, so sociology is just the study of society and how people function within that. So it's not psychology, you know, looking at how someone's brain functions. It's all right, how does, you know, society function with it? So we study, you know, inequalities across racism, sexism, um, different categories like that. Um, and also, you know, how people give things meaning and, you know, just kind of cultural and how society functions. So environmental sociology, specifically what I look at is um, inequalities related to those different categories, like racial inequalities, um, sexism, all these different things. But how that happens... Um, so it's basically how society destroys the environment and how that harms different communities. Um, so for instance, just to give it a very simple, uh, recycling plants actually cause a lot of bad pollution in the air. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a good thing. You know, we want to recycle, obviously. Um, but it causes that. And the communities that live around those recycling plants are primarily communities of color. So whenever mm -hmm. we try to, you know, do the right thing with recycling, we're actually creating greater environmental harm um, and health inequalities on communities of color. So I'm very focused on that environmental justice aspect of it. Now, I have to ask a question about that particular one. Is, is that more because land values are cheaper to build a recycling plant, typically where communities of care, color are? So it's, it it's seems like the obvious problem. answer, right? Like that. Yeah, it's and it's and it's it's the price and it's the concept of NIMBY, which is like not in my backyard. Right. So basically, whenever these are proposed in, you know, predominantly white neighborhoods, which have more power, have more political connections, they they say, no, it's not going to happen here. But whenever they're put in communities of color that don't have those same connections and don't have that power to say, no, we don't want these environmental harms, then that's what happens. So, for instance, the Keystone uh, pipeline was going to go by a bunch of white neighborhoods. They said no, and it got moved towards Native American reservations that, you know, their water supply was going to possibly be affected. And that's where the battle really happened. So usually a lot of these things actually start in, you know, oh, this is the best way for this pipeline to go. The uh, predominantly white neighborhoods are like, no, it's not going to be by us. Put it over there. And that's how a lot of things, at least in the United States, function. God, white people suck. Mm -hmm. just, just putting that out there. Bit. Fucking yep. That's, piece that's of my shit. research, basically. White yeah. people suck. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's your thesis right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So the, then I, I don't want to sound conceited because it's not like it's mine, but you probably really want to come to Alaska. Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. not only do we have some great national parks up here, but there's a constant battle between oil, Native American tribes, um, indigenous peoples, I should say. And, um, and, and the environmental causes around those. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely a kind of big trifecta of all those things that I am interested in on the academic side and, you know, on the personal side. Right. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to do a trip up to Alaska. The reason I have the national parks in Alaska, cause there's no roads to them. 
So you have to get a plane out there. Yeah. And that, you know, starts adding up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, it's... my, you know, PhD program isn't paying me a good enough salary to, <laughs> uh, you know, drop $10,000 on an Alaska trip <laughs> for the national parks. Yeah. Now there, there are, I mean, like you can go to Denali National Park, but it's right off the road. Um, and uh, still irritates me that people call it McKinley Mountain and Denali National Park. Like Denali. You, yeah. Yeah. They, they, Another white people, right? Yeah, thing versus the indigenous. But names. but at least that was yeah. At least I mean that was the official name, white people official name, I guess for a while. And then Obama um, switched it back in two thousand six or two thousand eight, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But all the maps still say McKinley. So. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Rand <laughs> Fuck and Rand Denali's McNally too. A much better name. What does McKinley have to do with Alaska? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D Denali's a great name. They. I, I like that name. Yeah, I mean, you don't rename the fucking tallest mountain on a continent just because you want the president to come visit. Like, that's a stupid reason to begin with, and it never actually works, so double yeah. stupid. Um, yeah, it, anyway. Uh, what, how, where, like, I'm, this is one of the questions I have for anybody that's, like, getting seriously into academia. Where do you expect your your education to take you yeah so i'm currently actually a professor at cal poly pomona so i'm finishing my phd program but i got my master's um, in arkansas so i'm currently teaching there um, and that's what i want to end up doing i want to continue to be a professor just whenever you get the phd you have much more opportunities um, than the masters. So I'm a professor right now, but I'm just uh, non tenure track or anything like that. I'm just, you know, teaching a couple classes. So once I get the PhD, I'll have a lot. Well, I don't want to say a lot of job opportunities, but a lot more um, job opportunities. Gotcha. So that's what I plan on working in is, you know, continuing to do research and teaching because I really love it. So I love teaching research, meh, but teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, lifelong academia is yeah. your future. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I'm also open to working with nonprofits uh, that do environmental justice. Uh, so that's kind of my other plan, you know, depending on how things go. Um, so ones that I've been working with are ones that are focused on water rights in California, because that's a big thing, because, you know, there's no water. So, gotcha. um, <laughs> well, at least in Southern California. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I grew up in Palmdale, Lancaster. So I, I am well aware of the water situation in Southern yeah. California, at least 20 years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it, it's just gotten worse. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> no improvement. Yeah. They, they opened a water park in Lancaster and it was open for one summer. And then the next year they couldn't reopen because of the water restrictions. Ugh. Um, so what they did is they went ahead and opened it and you could only play in the playgrounds. So you, they were charging full price just to play in the playgrounds. And everybody was like, yeah. That probably went over well. It 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 did not. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you just bring a few bottles of water with you, pour them on the slide. You know, you can, you're good. Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. Yeah, just just <laughs> scoop your bucket. This is all all the water we got. So just scoop the bucket, yeah. take it up there, dump it out, and jump real quickly. Make sure you take your bucket with you down because you don't want to hit me in the back of the head at the bottom because I'll throw it down there after you. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. Lord. So, um, out out of all of your visits to national parks, what would you say are let's Let's get your top three. What are your top three national parks? Top three. Okay, so they're they're very different. Um, and it's so it's really I'm glad that you didn't just say your favorite one because I'm like ah oh, they're like so. Um, in, in terms of just overall what you think of as a national park, like Yellowstone can't be beat. It has more wildlife than most national parks. It's larger than most national parks. It has the geysers, thermal pools, like just all kinds of stuff going on. A volcano. On. Yeah, a giant waterfall, its own <laughs> Grand Canyon. A um, little bit smaller than the other one, but it has it. Um, so yeah, so overall that just has like everything. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go during COVID restrictions. So no one was allowed to stay overnight in the national park. So that brought attendance way down. You know, families can't really, you know, travel around um, as easily if they're not able to stay at the campgrounds. But I do car camping whenever I go to the national park. So I just find a good spot to park, sleep in the air mattress in the back of my car. I have a Subaru out back, so a little bit more space. Um, and then go. So the, the crowds were tiny. Now, if I went right now, you know, or a little bit, you know, before COVID, I would have hated it because the crowds are crazy. 
Um, the best one for crowds wise is actually, I liked Great Basin in Nevada. Mm. It had really beautiful hiking. It has some of the oldest trees in the United States. Um, and just uh, really pretty in it. And it's, you know, up the mountain. So you kind of get desert, you get the alpine, you get, you know, rivers and creeks. Um, so that one's one that pretty much no one has ever heard of. Um, that's definitely in my top ones. And then the third, I would say, um, Kings Canyon, uh, just, a. is that better than the Grand Canyon? Yeah. I'm going to go with Kings Canyon, but it's a little bit biased cause I got to do that trip with my brother. Uh, usually I do trips by myself, but I got to do that one with my brother. So, you know, it made that, at, uh, extra bit of special. And so from the mm -hmm. oldest to the biggest trees in America, uh, at Kings Canyon and Kings Canyon and Sequoia are right next to each other. Um, so that one was awesome. Just beautiful river mountainscapes and yeah, got to see a few bears and from a distance. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's what? 63 national parks, 63 now. Yeah. And you're going to hit all of them eventually. That's the goal. Uh, what is So what, what are the ones that you're looking the most forward to? Um, as was brought up earlier, probably the Alaska trips, just because mm -hmm. the four, yeah, the four largest national parks are in Alaska. Like they're just huge. And, you know, some of them, the, the grizzly populations or brown bear populations are just so much that you get to see those all the time. Um, they have electric wiring around the fence grounds. So you're, or yeah, around the campground. So you're a little safer. Um, those ones. And then in the continental, probably mammoth caves, just because it is the largest cave system in the world. So I'm excited to get out. I haven't done pretty much anything on the East coast since I'm always based out of Southern California. It's a yeah. little longer of a drive out that way. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Um, <clears throat> you said you, uh, once you leave here, you're going to be going by Carlsbad Canyon, right? Yeah. Caverns, I'm heading there caverns. tomorrow at yeah. 4 45 AM actually. Yeah, that, that that's one of those that I I drove by it so many times, you know, going to see Kent or just driving out to the West Coast or whatever, that um, I'm sad that I didn't get, get a chance to go by there. Just because, yeah. from what I hear, well, it's that's, amazing. That's one of those things, because, like, when I lived in Vegas, uh, the Grand Canyon was a easy drive to get to, and I never I never went, because I was like, oh, I'm going to, I live here, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. Yeah. And I'm afraid Carlsbad Caverns is in that category with me right now yeah i know eventually i'm gonna go and it's right down the road but i've been here for i mean it's going on a decade at this point and haven't <laughs> been yet so <laughs> lucas went um last year i think it was he went um and said it was awesome so i just need to i just need to get over my damn self and get out there yeah they got the, the nuclear clock down there too but you can't go see that unfortunately mm -hmm. that'd be cool yeah. the uh you're talking about the atomic uh the atomic clock yeah yeah, keep... and see, that's why that's why I started doing the I want to do all of them, because I don't really care about the, oh, I checked them all off the list. But it kind of forces you to see all these, you know, different places across the United States. Yeah. And I, I visit other things whenever I do this as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then with me, I'm like, oh, I only have well, I'm actually living in Mexico right now, but, you know, still working in Southern California. Um, so I only have a few more years there before I finish my PhD and then I have to take a job wherever the hell I can get it because, you know, got to work. Um, so it's kind of like a, a timeline, like, Hey, you have to do all the parks that are around here, make it easier on yourself. Mm -hmm. So then it forces me to get out and do them. Um, instead of being like, Oh, like I have plenty of time. I can go there. So once you're like, oh, I want to check them off the list, it forces you to be like, hey, what am I doing next? You know, what's the next plan? How am I going to use, you know, visiting my family to my advantage on the yeah. <laughs> yeah. national park yeah. list? I, so. I feel the same way about geocaches. Like, I'm all, uh, how many times am I going to be in Yukon? I got to find a geocache while I'm here. Right. You yeah. know, and here I've been in Alaska for over four years and I still haven't found my first Alaskan geocache. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I just oh, haven't, wow. I just haven't done it. Like, I I want. I want to. Have you geocached? Josh? I have not. No. It's a, it's a fun. Are you aware of what it I is? I kind of, but I don't really know it in too much. Yeah. Detail. So it's I've basically, basically it. it's a it's a GPS based game in the real world. So people will hide what's called a cache. Yeah. Uh, so it's basically like a treasure hunt, right? But you're not allowed to bury it in the ground. It has to be like you know in the hollow of a tree or mm -hmm. underneath some brush or. Um, you can do urban ones where it's like in a um, like a removable brick or something like that, right? <laughs> so you get these clues, you get the GPS coordinates, which is incredibly helpful. Right. And then you get clues to, to 
usually the the cash will be uh, like I don't know, McDonald's toys for a long time were popular. It could be challenge coins. It could be actual money, which yeah. is actually pretty rare. Um, just little stickers, little trinkets, or it could be nothing at all. Um, the only requirement is that it, that it has some sort of a log, like a, a paper that log you, that you, yeah, you actually a physical sign log. your name saying I was here, and then you log it on the app or on the website, mm-hmm. saying yes, I found this one. Um, and it's just it's just kind of a just a thing to do when you're you know just one more layer of of activity I guess. Yeah. I don't but know, it's really yeah. fun for kids. I I enjoy it too. In fact, my my grown son uh, mentioned to me about a week ago that he wouldn't mind getting back into that. Yeah. And because uh, it's been a few years since we've done one around here. Yeah. I I actually have one sitting here ready to install somewhere. Oh, but awesome. Yeah, that's I something just... that I always wanted to do, and I've I've been ready to do it a couple of times, once in Germany and then once here, Yeah, and I just I just haven't done it. Um, I found them as big as a five-gallon bucket. GC23 yep. in Hawaii is a five-gallon bucket hidden behind a tree, yep. and I found them as small as a pencil eraser, Yeah, which <laughs> yep. was a total bitch move. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the smallest one I found was was the same. They call them a nano cache. Yeah, tiny magnetic little metal thing um, hit, that hit. I found in, in downtown Vegas. It was actually on the strip underneath like a railing. Um, yeah, it was like in front of a, a casino. It is in front of the uh, the Luxor. Is that where? Yeah. Wait, wait, did you did you find that one with me? Yeah. Are you oh, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because right. we we were it, it was like it was like a Thursday morning at eight o'clock on the strip, so it was completely empty mm-hmm. except for two mm-hmm. dudes like wandering around trying to find a fucking cash. Yeah. Both of us yeah. with GPSs in hand, and part of the yeah, thing is smartphones were prevalent, so we yeah. had these big like GPS receivers that yeah, <laughs> yeah. walk around um, the Vegas strip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which it was weird enough that two dudes were just walking around the Vegas strip at eight o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, but then to have all this equipment and be looking at stop signs and shit. Yeah, those it was. It was uh, and sometimes the GPS coordinates are the start, and then you have to find clues from there. Sometimes right. they yeah. point directly to it, and it makes it really obvious exactly where it is. Um, but yeah, this, I, I, I went to geocache here in Alaska, but I want to do it in... I, I want my first geocache here, because I, I did one in each each uh, territory I went through in, in Canada on the way up here. Mm. And one of them, like the, uh, the one I did for Yukon, I think, uh, the road goes up. Uh, no, yeah, the word, road goes up into Yukon and then comes back down to like Northwest Territory or, or whatever the fuck it is, Victoria or whatever. And I got it yeah. there. As, it was a, a, a picture cache. So you had to take a picture of a mountain to oh, show that you, were, you had found the spot. And then they would check it off. And then the road goes back up. And I forgot to get it while we were going through. So then we got cell reception for like 10 minutes. And I stopped the truck. And I was in there trying to find one. And there's one right at the bottom of that little curve where it dips back into the territory. And I was like, oh, that's got to be the spot. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So that, that's pretty fun. Um, I I would like to know if if you had one word of advice for people regarding your education and your experience with national parks and things like that. Um, one word word of advice for just the average person uh, looking at a map of of all the national parks and wondering why the fuck do I want to look at these? What would your advice be for you know Joe Schmo? non-nature guy yeah so i think a lot of people get into their heads with national parks that oh i'm not like a big hiker you know i'm not like in super great shape like whatever it is but that most national parks like the majority of visitors are retired people you know they got their rv and they're coming through and um they're really made accessible that you can see some awe-inspiring things you know from you know you park and then you look out the you know window like (laughs) Um, so there's definitely, you know, some parks are more accessible than others. Um, but definitely it's just about, you know, make the plan and do it and you're going to be fine. If you're not, you know, someone who wants to do a 20 mile hike to a peak, you don't have to do that to get in a national park. You can enjoy the time by the river and view that, you know, 20 mile peak from the river and it's beautiful. Um, so it's definitely a way to disconnect, um, you know, from whatever stresses you have in life, you know, you actually get out, uh, you lose cell signal sometimes, which is, you know, sometimes good, sometimes a little worrisome, but, (laughs) um, yeah. So just, you know, stop thinking, oh, I'm going to get to that eventually and just be like, yeah, I'm going to make a weekend trip out of it. You don't have to do everything in one trip. You can go again. 
-hmm. So, you know, go for a day, go for two days, whatever you do at that point in your life and enjoy yourself, you know? Don't overthink it too much. I hardly plan these trips. I'm like, all right, I'm driving here, here, here. I'll figure it out when I get there. When I get the map, I'll know what I'm doing. Yeah, so. it is not expensive either. National parks no. are very nominally priced. Compared to other things, yeah. So usually they're between 20 and 30 for like a one visit. Um, but you can get the uh, pass for the year, which is what I do, and it's 80 bucks. And it's every national park. You can go on limited amount of times. And so basically if you go to like three or four in a year, you're golden. Um, the mo Kent, what, what, uh, what national parks have you been to? Any? Oh, God. I mean, I've been to White Sands. Um, <laughs> I, see, this is something you would think I would prepare for, um, knowing that this was the topic of the show. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been to a ton of state parks. Yeah. I can't even count those. Um, national parks, though, honestly, right now, White Sands is the only one that's coming to my mind, unfortunately. So, so you never made it to the Grand Canyon. You still haven't that's made right. it. Yeah, I still didn't do it. Yeah. That was... That was uh, that was the one that that was during my my long trip from Texas to uh, Arizona via the rest of the country. Well, yep. Louisiana to Arizona via the rest of the country to avoid going right. through Texas. That's right. Uh, I went coast to coast in like eight days. Um, that was the one. The Grand Canyon was the one that w was the most awe inspiring to me yep. because mm -hmm. one, it's super cheap. It was like three bucks for you know for the the day pass or whatever. Um, cause you can park right outside and then you can just walk, walk up to it. It's yep. ridiculous. And sitting there on a cliff on a, you know, 5,000 foot cliff overlooking this tiny little river at the bottom. Like it's, it's fucking, it's like a, it's like a cunt hair wide. I mean, it's so small. <laughs> um, uh -huh. it, it's so far down that even on a clear day, it looks hazy at the bottom. It's one of those deals. And it, and you know, I sat there and I took some pictures of some birds flying over it and things and it was just it was I, I, I meant to stop by take a few pictures and leave and like four hours later I was like oh shit I gotta hit the road like I got places yeah. to be uh, I I can't recommend any major national park enough and there's so many that I have I've driven past and just didn't have the time or didn't have you know. You didn't make the time. Yeah. yeah well like coming up to Alaska we passed like three of them that I wanted to go see. But we had the a thirty five foot trailer behind us. I had the wife and the kid. We had a timeline we had to get to Alaska by. We were yeah. going through territory that I knew nothing about other than what I'd read in magazines and websites. You know, like it was, um, just yeah. But uh, that, that was that was I, I can't recommend enough. There's always something there to just either take. There's a reason somebody said, "Hey, we should protect this land and make it right. uh, make it special." So yeah. Because even the Grand Canyon has some of the, the greatest, like, nuclear reserves in the country, but it's still protected, mm -hmm. you know, even though we could get that material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the reason for it is it's it's amazing, you know. And that's one of the most accessible national parks. People don't realize that either. They think, oh, Grand Canyon, that sounds scary to, like, try to get into. But anyone, you know, d uh, despite your, ex you know, abilities can do the Grand Canyon and just, you know, like you said, get inspired. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful up there. Um, yep. Hey, man, you know where else it might be beautiful? Um, RitualMisery.com? Uh, yes. Yes, it might be beautiful. I, th I think it is, but I designed it, so. Right, yeah. yeah you know, there's that. Nice. No, no, I was talking about, uh, talking about this. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's Ritual Misery's One Word Weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. All right, today's random city is Brazzaville in the Congo Republic. It is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's cloudy. Cloudy, there you go. All right, thank you very much. Uh, one city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's Ritual Misery's One Word Weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. All right. Thank you, Mark, for that. Uh, he actually has nothing to do with it. I have to do it beforehand because Kent never remembers the bit. Um, right, right. What are we, uh, we going to talk about next week, dude? Um, I don't know. Um, you had a whole whole thing you wanted to rant on, like, levels of, of friendship. Uh, do we want to do that next week? There we go. Okay, there we we'll, go. We'll have, basically, it's basically going to be an hour-long Amos rant about friendship. It's going to be more of a discussion. There might be yeah, a few mini yeah. rants in there. 
Um, um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of, of people not understanding other people's friendship levels. Like boundaries? Yeah. yeah. Like I, yeah. But mine are, mine are very sure. well defined. Like I, I specifically... If you take offense to it, you take offense to it. I don't give a shit because it fall. It, it, it goes for everybody. Now there's there's family and there's and there's friends, and this is going to be concentrated on friends. Maybe we can talk about family another time, but um, we we might talk about it next week. But yeah, so that's going to be our levels of friendship, levels of of trust is really what it comes down to. So, oh yeah, circles of trust, like the the concentric yes. layers of. of yes. but, oh, but, I can get behind that. But but I, but I have a very specific definition of them, and uh, we'll get to yeah. that next week. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm, I'm really interested to see where this is going to go because this is 100% an Amos topic. Um, <laughs> Adding detail where no detail needs to be added, yes, that is an Amos topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I want to take just a moment. The, um, the the weather bit that we've been doing the last few weeks, if, if you guys don't realize, uh, our good friend Mark Jelinek has a podcast called What Is It About the Weather? It's not about forecasting the weather and things like that. It's about how weather affects literally every aspect of your daily life. It is amazing. It's a good like 20 to 30 minute listen. It, it's my Saturday morning ritual, um, a cup of coffee, Mark's podcast. It's wonderful. Go check it out. What is it about the weather? And it's, as far as format, it, about half of it is factual, just information in a, and presented in a way that you can actually like get behind it. It's not just somebody mm-hmm. reading a bunch of shit off. And the other half is a is usually a narrative that wraps all those facts in together into a cohesive uh, story of an event or a series of events. Yeah, that, like what? Yo, so here, yeah, so here, here are the facts, and here, and then here's why it why matters. it matters, but, like why uh, you care about it and how yeah, it would it's, affect it's you. Fun and and um, Mark's dulcet tones are a pleasure to listen to uh, as yeah. well. So. Yeah. It's a good show. Like, like, like. Uh, imagine, um, imagine Roman Mars. If Roman Mars had stayed in Atlanta. Oh wow, that's uh, that's kind of deep. I don't disagree though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, well, Mark's actually in New York now, but he for a, a good portion of his life was in Atlanta. Yeah, that's something uh, uh, Mark Jelinek and Roman Mars have in common. They both studied and and did things in Atlanta before yeah. going to the big city. Right on. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to direct folks uh, not only to Mark's stuff, but also to what we've got going on, ritualmisery.com. Um, if you think that what we're doing gives you value and you want to give us value back, patreon.com slash ritualmisery. Mm-hmm. Amos, what, where are you at on the internet? AnthonyLamos.com. There we go. Okay, yep. yep. Photography. Uh, I got uh, that what I'm going to find there. Uh, that's, that's what's up there right now. There's about to be more stuff. I'm still working. Right now, I'm kind of concentrating on the Buzz Out Loud archive. But as soon as that's over, I'm going to start <clears throat> start building the Audio Aperture Media site, which is going to link from AnthonyLomos.com. And um, I'm going to start adding more of my uh, of my discussion points on AnthonyLomos.com as blog posts. Oh, so cruise on by that. there. And I've been doing a lot of light chasing lately. Like it's light chasing season. So I've got a ton of light chasing photography that's going to be going up soon as well. Very cool. RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. That's really all you need to know about me. Uh, Josh, is there any place that uh, people should stalk you? <laughs> so I'm not uh, as much on the interweb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I basically just have Facebook. It is about the only social media that um, I have. Cool. So. We'll dox him in the post show. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to uh, yeah. find him. in uh... <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we are live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And DiamondClub.tv. Um, debatable. <laughs> but uh, but also we want to say thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. Uh, find all of his wonderful work at Incompetech.com. Definitely. Um, and uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for Josh, for me, and for you. Thank you. <laughs> this has been your original music. I didn't re- record the third track again. Oh. Well, just... Just... Um, and now the closer just, isn't working. 
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. R I T U A L M I S E O I. Is your third track your stingers and whatnot? Uh, yeah, third track is is the sounds. Oh, that's that's fucking easy then. Yeah. Throw those in later. Well. Yeah, it just it it's the same level of complexity that that caused me not to be able to finish it last week. Or two weeks ago, yeah. It's just it's it's <laughs> right. it's simple shit. It's just You're something that's got to get done. Enough that you just don't want to do it. Right? Yeah, I know that's 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 how it is. All right, uh, rmp.showbot.tv. Help us name this episode. Yep. So many great quips in the chat room, and nobody put them in, slapped them into the showbot. Yeah, there was a couple of, of title suggestions I noticed, uh, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh, hot chocolate? Wait, not that kind of hot. <laughs> right, yeah. New Mexico Ninja. Oh, there we go. Is <laughs> that a pre-show bit? That might have been a pre-show bit. Uh, no, 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 no. No, that, that, was, was, that was in no, show. That was show proper. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Party Bear. Party Bear. <laughs> that was funny at the time. I don't know how it translates now, but at the time I thought it was pretty funny. Um. Yeah, that means something else to me. So, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a different thing. It's part. part bear, it's not to be confused it, with pedo bear. Right, right. No, totally no little rainbow bears in the on the uh, the the back of cars. None of that shit. That's also a different kind of bear. <laughs> that's a dead bear. The, depend, uh. depends on uh, depends on the context, I think. Yeah. Well, like uh, Cogswell threw in uh, so many great clips in the chat room, and nobody put them in the bot. And I think we have our tagline. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Uh, um, and New Mexico Ninja, I think, is going to take the title. Yeah, totally. That I just voted for that. Yeah. So thank you, BK, for your title submissions. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, I think that's. I think that's good. Yeah, that's I think it. that's it. Like, I in, unless there's a surge of votes in the next couple of seconds, like that's that's going to be it. New Mexico Ninja. <sighs> Oh right, man. The, um also real quick, thank you to those of us or uh, those of you who are listeners to the show and also supporters of uh Showbot. Oh for sure. Show yep. Showbot makes uh makes Twitch in general better. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, BioCal created a, a really, really awesome tool and um I encourage you to go to what is it? Patreon.com slash biocal, I think is his I believe the link is on the bottom of the show pop page. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So so definitely um if you're into that sort of thing, uh throw a couple bucks his way. Uh it would be much appreciated. Uh yeah. All right, so what else we gotta cover before uh oh I should probably stop the recording. Well we gotta we gotta 